Hello and welcome. This is part 1B of my tutorial on GTK4 slash GObject. There's two things that I want to do in this video. This is kind of a bonus video. One is that I want to correct a mistake that I made in the last video and explain that mistake because I have, uh, by the time that you're watching this video, gone back and uh, put an annotation in the previous video explaining the mistake that I made. And two, I want to show you the reason uh, why um, that uh, mistake should be corrected and the potential pitfalls of making that mistake. So if you take a look at the demo widget.c file, you'll see that in the dispose function, I had run the, the GTK widget unparent uh, function directly. And that's not wrong in the sense that that is the function that you call to dereference uh, the object there. And um, that is the G object unref equivalent for a GTK widget. But the problem is that this uh, function um, has no way of handling a situation of where if it's called, if the function's called multiple times um, to cleanly deal with it. Now, the documentation is clear um, that in your dispose method, you need to assume that this function may be called multiple times. And the main reason for that is that you can have cyclical references, meaning that one object will reference another, and then when the, uh, the reference counts are being decremented for each one, they'll go back and forth and start to decrement each other. And um, that can result in the dispose function being called more times than you anticipate. So you need to, anticipate, you need to deal with the situation where the dispose function may be called uh, multiple times. And so let's just take a look at what could happen um, if, that, if the dispose function in our uh, widget here is called multiple times. So let's run make. Okay, we've got our main uh, uh, executable here. Let's run GDB on that executable. Okay, let's create a breakpoint at uh, demo widget dispose. Let's create another breakpoint at uh, demo widget uh, finalize. Okay, let's um, run that there. <clears throat> okay, our program is running here. So let's just go ahead and close that window. That will result in the demo widget dispose um, function uh, being called with our breakpoint. Let's run uh, continue just to get to our finalized breakpoint. Now before we single step or continue through here, let's call the demo widget uh, dispose function again on, uh, we have to call it on G object here. Um, and it's gonna, you know, it wants to warn us that um, it's going to abandon the function that's being called, that's fine. Continue. Here we go. This is the type of error, runtime error that, you, that we can get here, um, potentially, um, in our dispose function because we did not anticipate the dispose function being called multiple times. And when it is called multiple times, we get an assertion error at runtime. So if we were to leave that in there, um, potentially we could get people complaining in our bug reports that uh, errors are, are being spewed in the terminal. Okay. So let's quit GDB and let's show the proper way of, uh, of doing this. And so instead of running GTK on parent, what we should run is G clear pointer. And that, that takes the address of a G pointer. So self arrow button. And then it wants a um, G destroy notify function, which takes a G pointer. So we're gonna pass GDK uh, widget uh, unparent as a function pointer to that function, okay? And so what this does is, is it actually calls GTK un, widget unparent on self arrow button, and then it sets self arrow button to null. And then if G clear pointer is run again on the dereference of the address of self arrow button, which is just self arrow button, if that becomes zero, it'll just do nothing. So it will cleanly deal with that situation. So let's, let's uh, quit that file there. Let's run make again. Let's run GDB again on our DOS uh, main uh, program. Let's create the same breakpoints as before. Demo 
widget dispose, demo widget finalized, great. Uh, let's run the program. Here we go. Close the window. Okay, we're at our first breakpoint, continue. Now we're at the second breakpoint, but before we run that, let's call uh, demo widget dispose again on G object. Okay, fine, continue. No problem, you see no error this time. And then now our program is done. Okay, so there's an example of where the dispose function is called multiple times and there is no uh, problem. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is take a look at some very simple code and show how some of the basics of GObject works in terms of reference counting and uh, dereferencing uh, those counts and seeing um, how that whole situation works. So what we have here is a very simple uh, make file that just runs the typical C flags and everything. We create a binary called test and there's no object files here. And so in our test file, we have here um, our include uh, preprocessor directive that just calls the, the that pulls in the GTK uh, uh, header file. We don't need to technically pull in the GTK header file here because we're only using uh, lower level um, object types and so forth, but pulling in the GTK header pulls in all the dependencies such as uh, Tango, Cairo, and all that jazz. So that works out quite fine. And so we have a uh, main function here that has no argc and no argv. Um, so what we're going to do is create a Pango context, uh, which we're going to call C. Um, and that particular type of object is only being created for example purposes. It's just because all we need to do is run a very simple subroutine to create one of those objects and it creates a G object that is uh, reference counted and can be freed and uh, dereft the same way, unwrapped rather, the same way that any simple G object uh, uh, can be. So don't read too much into the fact that it's a Pango contact. This is just a simple G object that I'm using for example uh, purposes uh, only. And so we're going to create a shorthand to that Pango context called, uh, uh, called O and we're going to uh, uh, have that be a vanilla G object and the reason for that is, is that um, we want a simple cast uh, to the G object uh, star so that we can run some some uh, some um, uh, items in the uh, debugger. So you wouldn't typically do this in, in your production code, but this is just to show off some uh, examples in the debugger. So we're going we're to just create a Pango context. We're going to create a shorthand to that as a G object. We're going to then just unreference the Pango context. Um, we could just as easily have called C on that, but let's just use O because we've cast that to a, st a standard G object and we had the shorthand anyway, so that should work perfectly fine. So let's quit this file here. Let's make, let's run the program. You'll note that it just, you know, runs and quits immediately because all those create an object, destroy the object, and then quit the program. So let's uh, run that through GDB. All right, let's uh, run the start command to just create a breakpoint at the uh, main function. So what we do here is we um, create a Pango context, a simple G object. We'll do a single step there, create our shorthand, create a single step there. Now, before we call this subroutine here, G object on ref, um, let's, um, take a mental note here and think of what will happen next. So um, what will happen next is that we presumably have an object with a reference count of one and G object unwrap will then decrement that to zero and will then free the memory of the object. Now, um, how do we find out the reference count? Well, there is no public function in G object to show you the reference count. Um, there is a private function, well, not a private function, but there's a private uh, part of the API that will allow us to uh, do that. So don't ever do this in production code. I'm just showing you for example purposes. If we run print o arrow ref count, 
it'll show us our reference count of one. Now, if we single step uh, 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 through the program, it will then go ahead and run this line here of G object unref. And then if we call print O arrow ref count again, it'll now show the reference count as being zero, which is what was anticipated. But what would happen if we called G object unref again on O? Okay, we have to cast it at the return type, which is null. So we'll do that. And you see, we get a runtime error. So this is kind of what we were dealing with before, where if you call G object on ref or a similar type of function multiple times um, on an object that's already been freed, you start to get some runtime errors. And so you need to be aware of kind of as you're coding what your reference count is and just be aware of the fact that there is no way of finding out the um, uh, uh, reference count uh, um, through a public API. But there are other ways around dealing with that issue if you really uh, need to. And so <clears throat> let's go ahead and quit um, there. Let's take a look at our test.c file. One way of um, working around that, if you're not really sure about your reference count and you want to, you know that you will be cleaning up your object uh, in your code, but you're not, you, you just really want to avoid errors, you could run g clear object, which is kind of like gclear pointer, except that it always uses g object on ref as your g destroy notify function. So let's run that on the address of, uh, of O. Um, if I could just find out, gclear object takes a g object double star. Okay, so yeah, it will be better in this case to run it on the address of O then. So let's just uh, get rid of that, make, okay, no errors. Let's run gdb on dot slash test, start. All right, all right, okay. <clears throat> let's run gclear object. Now let's call it again. Is the return type void? Yes, it is. gclear object on the address of O again. Hmm. Oops. And no error. All right. So now our program is done. So that's a way of, um, if you're not sure if your uh, freeing uh, subroutine might be called multiple times, it is safer to call G clear object than it is to call G object on ref. But in this case, we knew that we created one instance of the object, there was no reference counting other than the instance that we created and that we were dealing with. So in this case, running uh, G object on ref was perfectly a, a fine approach. Um, but G clear object can be a nice way of working around some of those issues. So um, how do we find out, find out though, um, using public API, whether or not our reference count has reached zero. Now, oddly enough, the API that you're meant to use to um, tap into that is to add a what's called a weak pointer <clears throat> um, to the uh, G object. And so before um, I looked into, into G object uh, in C. Um, I had no knowledge of C++ and I had no knowledge of what a weak pointer was. To me, the terminology just did not really make an awful lot of sense. It, it never would have occurred to me that this is what a weak pointer was. But here it is. This, this is the API. And so what it, what it takes is a G object and it takes um, then a G pointer star to the weak pointer uh, location. So because we have a shorthand here to the G object star, the best way to, to do that here would be to call uh, G uh, object add weak pointer O. Now if we didn't have the shorthand, we could have just called uh, G object bracket C, but because we do have that shorthand, let's just utilize it. So, G, uh, to O, 
comma, and then we want a G pointer star. And because a G pointer is already a void star pointer, let's create an explicit cast, because otherwise we'll probably get an error. And we'll cast to the uh, G, uh, the address of O, or it could be the address of C. It doesn't matter, because we're casting it, and it's the same address anyway. So let's just use O, though, for consistency's sake. Um, and then we will go ahead and run G object on ref on, oh, again, just use consistency here. And let's show off what happens here when we do this. So that looks fine, make, no errors, GDB, well, let's run the program first, dot slash test, no errors. Let's run GDB now on dot slash test. Okay, start. No problem, no problem. Okay, so now we're gonna add our weak pointer. Um, but before we do that, let's print O. So that's the address of O, and you know we can print C too. It's the same <coughs> address, but it shows us the object type there. A single step to then add the weak pointer. So if we uh, print O, it's gonna be the same address. Now watch what happens here. Once we single step here and uh, run line 16, G object on ref on the uh, object. If we do print O, you'll see that the object has now been nullified and the pointer has been set automatically to zero. And so, um, you can utilize that and you can know, you know, use, tap into that knowledge if you really need to, to then automatically track whether or not the reference count has reached zero. And that's really the, the, the main way using the official APIs that you should be doing that. You can also add a weak reference, which is different than a weak pointer because um, it basically calls a callback function of your choice rather than clearing the pointer when the reference count reaches zero. But I, not found much use for that yet myself, but that is the other uh, public API alternative to uh, doing that. So let's quit there. And I think that shows off some of the functions, uh, some of the features of a geoobject that you might not be aware of. Um, and I think that that should be sufficient for uh, this uh, bonus episode of this tutorial. So next time we will get back on track and move on to part two and discuss uh, adding object properties to our prior uh, GTK widget, custom uh, widget, GTK4. Thank you for watching, good night and good luck.